Um, kindly allow me to introduce members of the higher table. <coughs> On my immediate left yeah. is Martin Jai Senghor. She is the Deputy Director of Taxpayer Education and Compliance. Um, next to her is Abdurrahman Ba. He is the Director of Legal and Board Services. Uncle Joe, popularly Uncle Joe. Joseph FBI is the Commissioner of Customs. And at the far end we have Alaji Esamwari. Not all of you, he's the president of the Clearing and Forwarding Agents. And next to him is Mr. Yang from the UNDP, he's um, their procurement specialist. Yaya Mane, director of technical services. Esa Jalo is the deputy commissioner general and head of domestic taxes. And Yaku Dabo is the commissioner general of the Gambia Revenue Authority. And Madam Lucy Fai Jai, she is the board chair of the Gambia Revenue Authority. At the other end, we also have the media, so that whatever we discuss here, the public will be, <coughs> excuse me, the public will be informed because we are accountable to the public that we see for sale. So, media, you are welcome. You are our friends. Keep the work going. And I say welcome to all of you. And now it's time to do speeches, but. We want to apologize that breakfast is a bit late, but soon after the opening, we'll go for photo shoot and then we'll go have breakfast and come back for the sessions. After the opening, you know, all of us will go, we'll give way to the technicians who are more okay with the issues and they will be discussing with you. It's a discussion, not a lecture. All right. Um, at this stage, sorry, I will invite uh, from the program, I will invite the Commissioner of Domestic Taxes, um, sorry, um, the Commissioner of um, Customs, Mr. Joseph Yai, and Mr. Gardner. Ladies and gentlemen, all other protocols respectfully and duly observed. All other protocols respectfully and duly observed. This morning, you are here with us for a day for this important event, Program of Activities for Tax Seminar with Major Importance and Clearing Agents. You all know that the collection of taxes is our mandate, direct taxes and indirect taxes, direct taxes for domestic taxes and indirect taxes is collected by customs. But we cannot do it without you. You are our main stakeholders, so you should also understand the rules and regulations that govern us so that we will have a level playing field. This is why you are here this morning, so that we can uh, sell ourselves for you to know, and if you already know, for you to remember what your role is and what, uh, and what, what our mandate is. What your role is and what our mandate is in this country. We are all in a very noble profession. We collecting taxes and you the intermediary of those who are paying the taxes because you would see that all this money is being collected and is being banked for the use of government, that is for national development. So, and where is the government developing? It's developing our own country. So I would urge you to be very participatory and to be attentive to whatever is going to be delivered to you this morning. Thank you. Uh, the Commissioner General, our GRA colleagues uh, here present, um, the UNDP, the Association of uh, Clearing and Forwarding Agents, um, importers, uh, participants, the media, ladies and gentlemen. I want to seize this opportunity to welcome all of you in attendance. Uh, Mr. Jai has already laid the foundation in terms of why we are here. But the objective of this seminar 
is to reach out to our very important stakeholders. Uh, in this case, we have the Association of Clearing and Forwarding Agents, and we have the major importers below in the room. This seminar is in line with our current strategic plan 2020 to 2024, uh, aimed at boosting stakeholder engagement and the promotion of voluntary tax compliance. To achieve these goals, we have decided to use seminars of this nature to educate and sensitize you on our revenue laws, the processes and procedures for tax payment, the services we provide, and how to access them among a host of other issues to increase your understanding of your obligations so that we are able to achieve you know, the objective of you know, getting uh, voluntary compliance. We hope that after this seminar, we will also in a new chapter characterized by an increase in voluntary tax compliance, respecting the conditions attached to your licenses, better services to your clients, and high level of trust and confidence between declaring and forwarding agents importers and exporters on one hand, and the importers, exporters, clearing and forwarding agents and the Gambia Revenue Authority on the other hand. GRA as the main government revenue collection agency has an important responsibility to maximize revenue collection for national development and increasing the democratic space in this country. This revenue maximization objective cannot be met without you playing your part as our important partners and the clients by ensuring that you are law-abiding and discharging fairly your tax obligations by making the correct declarations and payments. The higher the level of compliance, the more the level of citizens' participation in holding their governments accountable for the provision of public goods and services, which will all, all go very well for good governance in the new Gambia. Therefore, we hope that after this seminar, the perennial problems of tax evasion and tax avoidance through under declaration, misclassification, misdescription, etc., will be a thing of the past. Your profession is a noble one, and you have to recognize it. You are not different from the Medical and Dental Association. You are not different from the Association of Chartered Accountants. You are not different from, from the association that is formed by legal professionals in this country. Your association is one that is globally recognized. Wherever you go to in the world, your association or similar associations exist. And they hope to uphold the highest standards possible. So therefore you must do everything possible to make sure that you adopt good to best practices and you are able to embrace and not your standards that will make everybody recognize you as a reputable, you know, association or organization. And I think that is, you know, a task that the association has to take, you know, as key priority. Because at the end of the day, the kind of job that you do or the services that you render require that people have trust and confidence in you, particularly your clients, that is, you know, the importers, and also, you know, based on your relationships with GRA. You are the interface between the importers, exporters, those who, you know, are conduct transit, and GRA. So therefore, if everything goes wrong, you are the first point of call. And that is why we think it's very important, you know, to organize this seminar, so that you are properly and adequately sensitized on our business processes and procedures, the relevant revenue laws, so that you know all your do's and don'ts, so that at the end of the day, you are also able to respect all the conditions that are attached to the licenses that are issued to you. They are a sign of trust, and I, I crave your full indulgence in terms of ensuring that you protect that trust, because any failure to do that will amount to mistrust and then the confidence that we have reposed in you will be eroded. And I think that is something that you have to jealously guard. And the participants that are present here, I know some of them, you know, are, are your employees. And so, you know, uh, it's important that, you know, all these things, you know, are part of the culture, you know, that you have in place as far as your day-to-day work is concerned. I just, before ending my speech, 
uh, want to remind you about a few tools. I know you know, but they are very important tools. Don't betray your relationships with the importers by collecting monies for assessments and in turn, and in turn fail to pay it to GRA by in turn requesting for a GD direct delivery facility where you ultimately know there was no necessity for it because you have already collected monies for whatever needed to be paid. Don't negotiate a direct delivery facility and leave it hanging in the system as a debt that is due to the state. Then, by doing that, you have failed a key important re uh, responsibility attached to your relationship with the importers. They have paid their duties fully to the state as required by the law, but agents as intermediaries have failed in their responsibilities to allow them to discharge those responsibilities fully. So every debt that is recorded, make sure that you carry it, you know, as uh, in your books, and then you know you respect it, whatever plans, payment plans that are attached. Don't be part of any smuggling scheme. Don't be part of any international trade syndicate. Be our good and lasting partners in national development. As a revenue authority, we pledge our support and our doors are open at all times, you know, to render whatever service that you may expect from the revenue authority. Once again, I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Esa. I think uh, the speech is fully loaded, reminding us of our obligations and our responsibilities towards our uh, clients, our customers, and to the Gambian people at large. Now I will invite Mr. Tijan Yang from the UNDP to also share a few words with us. It's not lost on us that the Gambia continues to be a tax driven economy. In this regard, we continue to recognize the area's continued attainments in working towards achieving the increasing national revenue collection targets annually to finance the national budget. It is against this backdrop that the EMP is resolved in having GRA as a critical partner and we continue to provide the much needed support in fulfilling its mandates to maximize revenue collection. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the EMP's broad interventions hinges on the NDP strategy priority two, seeking to complement government efforts in macroeconomic stabilization and economic management to achieve inclusive growth and poverty reduction in the Gambia. More specifically, the project also seeks to address weak economic management, which has significantly contributed to widening physical deficits, rising public debt, and balance of payment problems, minimal alignment between priority areas and resources allocation, resulting from weak linkage between planning and budgeting. Finally, I am of the conviction that this training will avail us an enabling environment an interactive and collaborative engagement on tax compliance requirements, and therefore challenge all of you here present to be ambassadors of GRA by means of being tax compliant in a bid to consolidate GRA's registered gains. Thank you and wish you fruitful, uh, fruitful deliveries.
Thank you very much, Mr. Yamsi, for that introduction. Madam Chair Person, Commissioner General, Deputy Commissioner General, Commissioner of Customs, Director of Technical Service, Members of the Business Community, the Interstate of DRA, Executive Members and Members of the Association, and Members of the Press. Uh, Mr. CJ, I must confess that this entire committee, the, I must confess that the entire committee of customs clear and foreign agent and myself are very much delighted to participate in this stakeholder engagement seminar. For those of you who may be new, this is not a surprise thing to us. We have long since been benefiting from short training from GRA. But for this special one, I want to be convinced that the dream of DRA of this authority are very much conversant with our constitution, especially the aims and objective of the Italian Accordion Association. I just want to mention a few. That is, we, the Italian Accordion agents, we have made it to be one of our trademark, to be a facilitator. We want to facilitate and complement customs support in collecting revenue for the government. We give assistance to importers and exporters also. We provide trade information and trade facilitation. We give support to customs and excise, government post authority and chamber of commerce. These are our stakeholders. Mr. CD, we cannot, but we cannot do this in the absence of knowledge. Therefore, this seminar has a direct link to our daily activities. The association and I will participate fully to your expectation and will forever cherish the memories of this seminar. My fellow participants, always remember that life is a school. And I think that's what they are, you know, that they decided to put, in, to put us in school today. As, hours, as minutes pass by, hours pass by, I believe we will be done in the lessons. And, we, and when we learn the lessons, that means it's information, knowledge. But the object of knowledge is to unite with practice. For practice without knowledge will lead you into a hole. But knowledge without practice is a vain. But when we unite the two, we will for we will shape the destiny of the country, we will shape the destiny of the country and of countries economically, of the country economically through GIA. Remember that education is at the heart of our job. It is essential for our personal fulfillment of each and every player and for the agent. Education will also determine whether we get a decent and rewarding job. And education empowers us to become commander of our destiny. Mr. CG, finally, we want to thank GRA, but a special thanks goes to the Minister of Finance in collaboration with UNDP for giving us this opportunity to be able to sit together and learn from the people who are going to be doing the deliberation today. And uh, on this note, I thank everyone, everybody and thank you very much for your pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Wally. Um, the success of DRA is directly linked to your support, your collaboration, and your cooperation. We'll be cherished so very much. Um, DRA is getting 14, 15 years. When we started, revenue collection was not this high. Um, 14 years down the line, we are a 400 million collected, and we 
the account employees, the public data eventually to the collector. Thanks to your patronage, thanks to your support, thanks to your collaboration. So we cherish it and that is why we annually organize tax award seminars to also celebrate compliant taxpayers and the essence of this training is to ensure that there is compliance. Compliance that can come about the there is compliance. So money and others will help share that with us tonight. Uh, thank you very much. I will now invite the Commissioner General um, to address the gathering. very, very, very important. 
So with that, I want to urge you to be highly professional so that we are all comfortable and relaxed when we know that uh, you are you know what you are doing and you are very confident and obviously high compliance as far as access are concerned. So that, that is my um, second uh, request for you and I hope this seminar will equip you more with what with more information, more details of what is required of you so that you can then be able to fulfill your mandate um, excellently. And obviously my last point is just to ask you for your continued collaboration. I understand you are around 104 different clearing and coordinating companies, which is very high for the look up here. But nevertheless, it shows how important this work is, this professional is. Because again, we are back to the weight of what you do in this international trade um, in bringing revenues to GRE. So with that, I'd like to wish you a very good morning or a very good day and a uh, very fruitful uh, deliberation and um, have a nice day. Thank you very much.
the GR into material management that are here, including my able Commission of Customs, uh, famously known as Okuto, and also our young director, Abraham Mupa, who is also a very agile person, but in Jai Sengwar, with Jaya Mane. All these people are part of the top management of GRA. They are all here with us. Our friends, not forgetting our friends, the media, uh, our old Nyoke is here with us. He's always with GRA. We are with him up to percent last weekend. So I'm happy to see you as well. Um, and all the media people that are present with us here. Uh, I want to uh, say that all, all the protocol duly and perspective observed. I want to say assalamu alaikum to all of you. Thank you. It is indeed a great pleasure to be in your midst today to present over this very important seminar. This seminar, organized by the Gambian Union Authority with the support of the UNDP, is meant to create a forum engaged with one of our most important stakeholders, that is the, the importance of clearing and forwarding agents. This seminar is a demonstration of the higher regard we have for importance and clarity against, and it is also an acknowledgement of the importance of the role of importance and clarity against in our revenue mobilization mandate. I hope that the participants in this seminar will seize this opportunity to positively engage the authority with a view of enhancing relationship between importers clearing agency and the authority. Further, the seminars will also serve as a platform to discuss issues affecting international trade and describing workable solutions to the issues in the international trade. This thing is very gentlemen. The government of the authority is committed to enhancing and facilitating trade not just to meet our obligation on the international trade facilitation agreement, but because we strongly believe that creating the enabling environment for trade to thrive will no doubt increase our revenue collections both from international trade and domestic taxes. It is in recognition of these facts that we deem it necessary to organize this seminar to build on the one group, the importers, the agents, the revenue collectors, for the cross fertilization of the ideas with the overall objective of inter enhancing international trade. Therefore, this thing is less than judgment. The discussions in this seminar are tailored around issues related to requirement for registration of climate agents, documentations for clearing of goods, proper classifications of goods, accurate input of data into the ASICUDA system compliance challenges and plan reforms initiative. As you know, uh, GRA is an institution that keeps on uh, reforming the systems that we have. If you remember some time back, a couple of years, we were using the ASICUDA 2.7. ASICUDA 2.7, for those of you who were with us at the time, this is a system where the, the officers are the ones that do the inputs on behalf of the agents and the importers. And we thought that this is not the best system. We have to go migrate to a system where the importers and the agents will be given the mandate to do their own declaration. And then the GRA will now come and do the assessment. And that is what we call as the process. When we are migrating to that system, to some old schools, it was like, no, 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 this is no go here. Uh, it was difficult at the beginning. I remember the days when uh, I have my former uh, CD, Kaba, the first few days of uh, who was born before computer. The first few days, it was like, is this system going to work? And I keep saying, yes, it will work. Everything beginning is tough, but we have to make sure that uh, we stay what we want to do. But when people get used to the ASICUD and PROSPOS, it looks like they will never want to go back to the ASICUD and So, um, just for your information, GR is now currently working uh, to move from ASICUD and PROSPOS to ASICUD and WAR. 
which is another major milestone in our system's change and in our reform agenda. Currently, the experts are with us, and they are building the system, and as and when they are ready, we will let you know, we will give you the necessary training, and I am sure, undoubtedly, you will be very happy when we have the Asset the World platform. Because, just to give you a few, um, Asset the World is a web-based system, of which, when it is ready, you don't necessarily need to be in your office to do your declaration. You can do your declarations by using your mobile phone because it is web based, just like the way you enter into the internet. You do the same thing. Whether you are in the Gambia or you are outside of the Gambia, you can have access to the system. So these are come some of these some of these things are the new innovations that GRA is involved in. And we are doing it for the best interest of the country. We are doing it for the best interest of you people and our brothers and sisters in this country. As you know, the world is moving, technology is advancing. We don't want to stay behind. We want to go with the technology. So every time a new system comes that shows this of the day, we try to make sure that we move into this year. And I can assure you, a simple world is one of the best tools that customs offices are using all over the world. So pretty soon we will knock at your door and we will invite you for possible trainings to that. And uh, moving from that, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is our hope that this seminar will yield the desired results of enhancing the knowledge and skills of importers and clarity the edge of international best practices as it related to the laws, processes, and procedures involved in clarity and forwarding the edge. We, at the level of GRI, we are always with the people that days are gone where you will have clearly against who can read and write. Those days are gone. We believe that the young generations that are engaging this and with the cooperation of your executive, it is high time we, you, we, we train, recruit people who are professional and competent to do the job. And if that happens, it will uh, give us an added advantage in terms of speed of clearing, in terms of issues that are related to international trade, in terms of your data that you put into your system. Because you know uh, computers are so that it is what you put in there, that's what you get back. And they call it in English, garbage in, garbage out. So if you have somebody who is not really, uh, the standard of education is not that high, and you want him to do a process, sometimes we can encounter problems. And you know these data are very important as far as we are concerned, as far as the country is concerned, because a lot of development issues are going. They drive the policies and everything full of data that we put in. So you know, these data are very, very important what you put in. Be it the kilos, the weights, the values, and everything. Uh, we, we normally share these data with other stakeholders by statistics. And most uh, agencies or government institutions, when they need data, they go to central statistics this data and statistics also we sell this data from us as well as Minister of Trade, as well as Minister of Finance. So therefore it is our way that the people who put this data into the system should be people who are professional, who are capable, who are well educated and who are well trained and experienced so that the data that will be put into the system will be good data. In addition, uh, this also will also be centered on tax Payers, compliance, obligations, and, and participants are encouraged to, uh, to fully participate in the deliberation of giving feedback on the process and procedures to be discussed today as of to the offer, authority suggestion for reform. I assure you that your feedback will be noted and taken seriously. We believe that you are our partners, and in partnership is give and take. We are on the other side. You are on the other side. We we'll are partners going the same direction, and that is to make sure that uh, we bring development in this country, and as well as to clear the goods of the importers that you are representing in a speedy manner, but also be professional. And therefore, in this kind of forums, whenever you come there, don't just keep quiet all the time. If there are issues that are in in your head, just bring them out. We have our professional staff that will be here with you for the whole day 
uh, bring the questions, they will answer it to the best of their ability. And then uh, that will address a lot of problems and that will add the knowledge. It is uh, advisable for all of you to participate fully during the discussions because that is why you are here. So take advantage of the day, take advantage of these professional people that will be pro uh, uh, providing these lectures. We will provide our lawyers will be coming over, our tax experts will be coming over, and all the professional staffs from the technical service will also be here with you. So feel free to ask any questions that you think is important and that will be beneficial to you. And if, uh, if anything, you can also take note and send it to us and it will surely get back to you, you know, after the workshop. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, compliance management is one of the most resource intensive engagement of the authority, but also most important for the revenue collection institution. But therefore, GRE management is aware that in order to improve compliance, there is a need to raise awareness. And this seminar is part of our stakeholders' engagement strategy to raise awareness with a view of improving compliance. The more compliance, the more understanding we have in the country, it increases the revenue collections we do. Because that means that there is no way of like enforcing people to do what they are supposed to do. Because if you know your obligations, you know what is right, then it makes life easy for you and it makes life so easy for us. And we kept saying one thing, which I believe should be clear to all of you, and that is, Gambia is a tax-based economy. Until maybe in the closer future or near future, we may have oil or we may have other resources. But as far as of talk to today, it's a tax-based economy. And therefore, it is you and us and all others that should join our hands to make sure that we collect the limited, limited resources, the revenue that is available. And to do that, it is easier when people are compliant. When the businesses, it makes life very easy for us, it makes life very easy for you. It's better than us coming over all the time and to knock at your door and say, pay this, do this, do that. We want you to be aware of your responsibilities. And you can be an agent, clearing and forwarding importance. Once you are aware of your responsibilities, it makes life easy for us. And because we are friends, we are partners, we are all happy at the end of the day. Our key responsibility is to collect revenue and launch it to Central Bank. Let me make this very clear. The accounts that we put the money into Central Bank, we are not signatory to that account. Our only goal is to make sure that we, we generate revenue, collect it in a more professional manner, and then account, log it to the bank and account for every product that we put into the bank. Now, this is Central Bank's responsibility to make sure that this money is kept safely there. And now it is another ministry or government agency's responsibility to take the money and spend it accordingly. So you see, in life we have what we call division of labor. You don't want, to, you don't need to be an economist to know the simple division of labor. Every institution has its responsibility. Every institution has its own areas of government. Just like declaring and forwarding again. Your responsibility is to make sure that the importers give you the relevant documents. Original document, which is very important. And then you do the declarations on their behalf, take care of the civil, take care of the ports, take care of the customs, and then you go, once the payments are processed are gone, you, you deliver the procedure. That's where your responsibility starts. And now somebody else takes responsibility from that to another level. And that's the simple fact of life. We all have to do what we are best you know, in doing. And that is why we call it economics division of labor. This is our responsibility as DRS staff to so collect and deposit at the central bank. And then all the people should take responsibility from that. And in doing that, uh, we would always want you to uh, help and help us and help us. Because we are all in this country. Whatever good we do is for the country. We have no other country beyond Gambia. We are all Gambians, and I think we should all join our hand to make sure that we do the best for our country in our different ways, because we cannot all be clearing and forwarding agents. Neither can all of us be working at GRA or working at the GPA. Neither can all of us be working at Central Bank or Ministry of Finance or Trade. By, by default, by nature, we have to work in different areas. But wherever you are, the most important thing is do your best. Do your best at all given time. 
When you do that collectively, then we contribute more. This is what we bring at the level of GI. And uh, collectively, we work together as a team. So at the end of the day, the sky will be the limit in terms of achieving whatever we want to achieve. This thing was done as a judgment. Uh, I wish to take this uh, acknowledge the support of the UNDP in providing the funding for this session. The UNDP has been a great partner to the Gambia Revenue Authority over the years. The UNDP has provided funding for some activities of our corporate strategy plan, and we are grateful for this support and we look forward to receiving even more support as we strive to modernize our processes and procedures. I also want to take this opportunity to reach, uh, thank the staff of Gambia Revenue Authority for their hard work in organizing and coordinating this sector. These are people that I work with. I trust them. I have confidence in them. I work with them as a team. At the level of GIA, uh, we are all commissioner generals. We are all deputy commissioners. We are all directors. We are all officers. We work as a team. When it comes to work, it is the subject that matters. It is not who is the CG, who is the CG. We all speak together. We try to um, meet and discuss and we make sure that uh, we achieve our objective. And you'll be here with, for the rest of the day with some of the staff. You'll see professionalism in them. And I'm sure at the end of the, the seminar, you will all work out happily. This thing is there, ladies and gentlemen. As syndicated earlier, as partners in international trade, I implore you all to seize the opportunity that this seminar presents to discuss the pertinent issues in the international trade from the perspective of importers climbing against the revenue collectors. As I said before, this is an opportunity, it's a rare opportunity. Yeah, this seminar, it costs money for it to be organized. It costs time, more importantly, time. I know you are all busy in your various ways um, in life. You, are, you have offices that you have to run. One of the reasons why you leave your office and came here to speak for the day is to get some knowledge about what you are doing. And therefore, I would urge you all to take the uh, lectures and workshops seriously. Uh, most of the time, we have problems when we organize this kind of workshop. People will take their mobile phones and, uh, you know, this day and age, we all have one or two mobile phones with us. But I want to appeal to you all of you that mobile phones should put them on silence while the lectures are going on. You will be having play. You have maybe coffee play, lunch play, and other things. When you go out, you can be answering to your mobile. This is just to uh, give the lecturers uh, that room also to allow your other colleagues to concentrate in uh, the workshop. Because otherwise, it will be difficult. If it is urgent, you can excuse yourself and go out. I want to give you, to, I want you to give your full support to the lectures because so many things have changed, and we want to achieve a lot. But we cannot achieve these things generally alone. We have to get your cooperation. You, as I said at the beginning. You are one of the stakeholders in the process of learning in international training work. And therefore, we trust you. Uh, we believe that with your support, and uh, we can achieve a lot. And I'm happy that um, your executive, they are very consulted. Uh, your current executive are very consulted. It was just yesterday that we had a meeting with them in, uh, in GIA at the board meaning that any issues that they have and uh, they feel that they should discuss with GRA, they always, I told them, you don't need to write a letter. It's a matter of just uh, sending, giving you a call. The next available time, you can come over, we have, I don't normally like to work bureaucracy. I want things to be done as quickly as possible. Because in this field of international trade, and even in the domestic tax, revenue collection, time is very important. You don't have to waste any time. But I'm, I want to say in the presence of other members, yes, sir, that I am very happy with the executive because of the fact that they are very professional and they are being consulted. And that is what we, uh, that's the way we want. I want you as members of your organization, like Mr. Jarlow has said earlier, 
you are professionals. It's a job. This is a professional job. You take it seriously. It's like he said, doctors association, lawyers association, the bar association, and many others. So you take this as a career, take it seriously. And don't let anybody to put you in a way to do something that is out of your way. So that tomorrow it will disturb you in your career. Take your work seriously, take it professionally. The sky is the limit. You can achieve anything during the course of uh, your work. So um, I want to appeal to this is an opportunity that I have, I can talk to you directly. I want you to be serious with your work. I want you to be professional in anything you are doing in life. If you are not professional in it, then you have a problem. Putting all jokes aside, your work is your work. Your work is your life. You have to take your work seriously. You are what you are because of your work. So you have to take your work seriously and respect the people that are involved in the international trade where you do. You have a lot of stakeholders, including the GPA, Maritime, civil agencies, and others, including GR. Make sure that you respect all of them. Wherever you need to do a particular uh, uh, protocol, make sure that all the protocols are observed. Make sure that things that need to be done are done professionally. You will be respected, even in your absence. When they talk about a particular agency, everybody will know that that agency is not professional. And I am happy that uh, you exactly briefed me that you have a core of conduct. Some of the members that are not uh, behaving well, your code of conduct will discipline them. And we also assure them that at the level of GR, any one of you who misbehave or do something that is not supposed to be, we will next be present. And we'll make sure that we will also use uh, the code of conduct or the rules to make sure that that particular person will have the dance of the music. And whoever achieves something good also, you will get the benefit. Like you know, uh, Usman Barbe said that we will organize Taxpayers Day, Taxpayers Award, and uh, some of you have been given awards. And because of COVID, we had a break on that. But inshallah, COVID is now gradually going. So once we are satisfied based on the medical reports or whatever, we will start to resume back even now some of those programs. But they are also good to motivate you and just to indicate to the whole world that this organization, this business or this agency is really doing their work professionally and as far as GRA is concerned. And that is why we have decided to give the party and the, the award. So we will make sure that we continue with that. Um, I would want to uh, uh, stop here and uh, want to wish all of you a successful delivery. I thank you for your kind attention. I now have a singular honor and privilege to be at this workshop. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, as great players in the economy. Thank you very much. I've been advised to pass the mic around so you introduce yourself. Yeah. Yes. Let me start. For that, we have a very big issue. If that one can be addressed, we see how best we can make quote unquote it will be fair. Some of them say that we don't even mind if we stop there. We have that issue. Right. You get your value, you beat, go to customs, but they revive you for an adjustment payment. So when when you go to the customs, we have an issue. Okay. Yeah, good morning, everyone. You want to do booking with them? They will say it's an internet booking. If you do your booking, you need agent do booking for your customer. They will never give you booking unless your customer and an outsider contacted them directly, and then they give them booking. So one of my customers he is here right now in Gambia. Three months, I've been following them to get the booking. I cannot get booking. He was in Nigeria. Call them, and they give him a booking of 18 containers. When they are ready, they ask me to go and collect the, the booking. 
So I went there and they said, no, they are the ones who are supposed to do, the, do it themselves. They are, the, they are to do the logistics, not us. So I talked to them, they said no, and they cancelled the bookings. Up to today, who don't register to the max line, they will not give you booking. So this, what does we need to stop to help us? Definitely it's not fair. They are only, you know, doing the trucking themselves. Max line don't have a single truck. They are going to the port to hire trucks from others. We don't know how they manage to do their export entry, because we never see any agent who is doing export for them. There is nobody here who is registered with Maxline to do the export entry. That means Maxline is exporting the continent without doing any declaration. Up to today, all agencies are here. Ask them who can get a booking from Maxline. No. no. Definitely not. So definitely we need to address that. Because they are just, I don't know, uh, shipping line. Let them stop with their work and allow us to continue our work. CG, just say it. Everything starts from one place to end one place. So others continue from there. Thank you. I mean, custom stores, they know the customer, they know the agents. We should give, they should give us way to max time. What they are doing is very wrong. We are losing our customers. If you go there, they will talk to the, I mean, to the, uh, to the customer and not the agents. And the agents are Gambians. You are the people who are following us and not the, I mean, the, the customer. You should work with us. Max Line should work with us. We should be given guarantees. We should talk to Max Line. Max Line should stop talking to customers. They should talk to agents because agents are the ones that are bringing the customers to them. So please, if you guys can help and add weight, because we lost some of their customers to Max Line itself. They are doing the trucking, they are doing the exports, and they are not supposed to do exports. And that is very wrong. It's been going for over one year now, and nobody is doing anything about it. Nobody. We have been talking to our executives, and our executives are here to help us. This is our way. Thank you very much. I knew that your executive had also raised this issue yesterday, and we have already taken steps to take it out. And uh, when we are done with what we are doing, you would also be in privy to know what is happening about the exports. Because we also need information on the exports. Not only the processing fee that is being paid. Government needs the figures to take care of its obligations of the balance of payment of the um, loans that it is getting to add to the revenue we are collecting for the development of this country. So the export figures are very vital to all of us, even more so to government. So be rest assured, we would not take that lightly. Um, uh, the fourth question was about valuation. The problem is we should not even give you values. We should not give you values. You should come with the original invoices and present it to us. Or better still, your clients even if you are not giving us, which you should not be doing, your clients should give you their original invoices. This is not a gender jai business. Your business is not a gender jai. Your business is a very noble professional job. And apart from that, government has seven years. Seven years. During that seven years, if you clear today, we are in 20, 2021. Here up to 2028, government can come back to say through an audit that what you paid was wrong and you need to pay more. Not only going to the ports, I think that is just a remedial situation. They are just helping you. When they see that you have gone to valuation and what was given is a little bit wrong, you go to the ports, they tell you to come back to the office to pay. Are they putting it in their pockets? No. They are telling you to pay back to revenue and give you a receipt. So if you want to avoid that, bring your original invoices. Ask for an original invoice from the importer. Just as they are giving you original bill of leadings, they should also be giving you original invoices. Thank you. Uh, I told you uh, earlier on, uh, you, you have a very able and professional person. They did engage us, and we had to discuss it yesterday. 
Um, I did not want to go into the details of our discussion. That's why I said they are serving your interest. Like some of the uh, uh, questions that we are asked, uh, my brother was just uh, mentioning that the problems that they are having with the max line. This is not the first time with max line. You remember six months ago, they have, you have a heated issues with max line. GRA was involved, and we had several meetings with Max Line and the executive. But thank God, the issue has been addressed. Now you are all happy, you are working like a family. And this one also, we will certainly get involved. At the end of yesterday, when we had a meeting with them, I assigned uh, Joe and somebody, I said, let them get us the statistics. If we prove that Max Line is involved in this, and they don't have any tendency of doing it. We will make sure that we will call them. But we want to prepare ourselves properly. Because like uh, my deputy said, uh, the head of Max Line is a smart guy. So we don't want to call him and then he come try to play us Maradona again. We want to make sure that like in life, whatever you are doing, you have to be prepared. You have to do your research, you have to do your homework and get your documents and everything before you uh, call up on a meeting. So at this stage, we just came to know this just yesterday through your engagement. And we will, I want to assure you, your problems are our problems. If Max Line wants to do clearing and forwarding, besides in addition to their shipping agency, there are clear laid down procedures. They can do that if they are qualified and certified. Then they can get involved like any one of you. You do come through competition. But as up to today, I have not signed any certificate that indicates that Max Line they are serving as a clearing and forwarding here. So we will do our research better, more, and get our facts, and then we will invite them, and then we will invite your visit. Inshallah, the issue will be addressed. Thank you. George and Julie at the same time. We also have to respect the revenue laws. We cannot act outside the laws that we are using to arrive at our decisions. And that we are the same laws that we are using to collect these revenues, to enforce. The same laws have protected you. You should be aware of the protection that the law is giving, giving to you. Any decision that the Commissioner General makes, every one of us, you know, our, our responsibilities are delegated responsibilities. That is why the law will make reference to the Commissioner General but the Commissioner General will not be in every place where some of these decisions are made. Mm -hmm. But he is held fully accountable for everything that we do. Because of the fact that the decisions that we take are decisions that are based on you know, the revenue laws. And the Commissioner General is the one that is mentioned in the law. The same laws, the reason why I'm emphasizing this, they are saying that these decisions can be challenged. So we are not you know, uh, like operating in a space where we are untouchable. In the same manner that we follow you and say the law says this, you can come back where the law protects you and say, look, this is wrong. A tribunal is, the law has already, you know, um, provided for the establishment of a tribunal. And there is a tribunal. Utilize the tribunal and challenge us. What you think is not right and we are doing it, challenge us. And even beyond the tribunal, if you, based on the, you know, they look at everything based on the facts that you present, if they are convinced that you are right, they will give you all, the, all, 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 all your juice. And even if they do, and you are not satisfied, go to the court of habit. So I'm just saying that for you to know that this is, there is no element of unfairness in what we do. We can do what we want to do, but we have to base it on the law. We have, we have violated the laws, challenge us. Concerning the well taken value and then you are sent back again. I just want to identify areas of our membership that when this was brought to our attention, we did not start at our lawyers. We did go to the board and then talk to the guy who was doing it. But then he gave us a genuine reason that warranted that for us not to go back to the pay to say we are going to treat it. Because as equally he said to me, look. I am doing this because I am not going to tolerate any VIP clearing agent. I want everybody to be treated equally. If what is good for Samba must be good for Moro also. 
If Moru goes and they give him 50 dollars, if Samba goes, they must give him 50 dollars also. But if uh, the reason why I'm returning and refusing most of these things, I because I'm not seeing a level field, I want to create a level playing field. That was why we did not do much because we saw the need that well. Actually, we can't go beyond this anymore because the level field he wants to play is in our interest of everybody. So we might also apologize maybe for not coming to you to tell you that. But then we saw the need not to be, not to do because it was the interest of everybody. But the rest assured that your problems are problems. What affects you affects you or affects us also. We go to the same people to do whatever you are doing. So the rest assured that we will never rest on our laurels, but to make sure that we serve you to the best of our ability and in your interest. Thank you. Uh, as planning agents, we are ambassadors in this state. We should know our value. We should know that this is a noble job where every go in the world, where every travel in the world. We here in the country, Gambia, I would say our responsibility as planning agents is lapping behind. One of our appearance, we in planning agents, is important which we are not following. We have a dress code that we should be following, we are not following. We should speak one voice. We are representing the customers too, but what we are working for the nation also. We you travel to other countries with these neighboring countries you go and you say I'm declaring again, they will look at you. But why it is not happening here in the country? It's because of ourselves. We are not taking our job seriously. We are not doing our job seriously. And I say this not only to our last um, AGM, I said it. We need to change our way of working. We need to know that we are professionals and we work as professionals. You go to other countries, you say, I'm a calling agent. You go to one man, you say, I'm a hotel. We ask you all the necessary documents. The, in, the invoice, the parking list, all the time. If you leave and go to another guy, he will try to be safe. Let's stop charging our customers without getting these documents. And what we do is charge your clearing fee. In Senegal, you have clearing fees. You have documentation fees. You have logistics fees. There is where you can have your bills and fees. But the revenue is going to be paid by the customer. It's not your agent. So we shouldn't be sitting here even talking about revenue, about our duties. Do this belong to the customer. Whenever you do your documentation, you do everything you are ready, you take it to the customer. This is the uh, amount I should pay, you give you the check or card you go and pay. And always make sure that you have, you pay the money given to you. Not taking the money from the customer, as he's, uh, this year I just mentioned here, and diverting it, taking a direct delivery. We should be very careful of direct deliveries. We are a tax-based economy, as commissioner said. We don't have any resources in this country. All what we depend on is tax. So, and we are the Gambians, and we should make Gambia to go high. In the sense that we um, uh, collaborate with the GRA to help them in collecting revenue. Let's be, let's be serious in what we are doing and try to get our offices, try to organize ourselves. If you organize yourself, your customer will respect you in your job. You go to one clearing agent office, that's why we are going to emphasize that this year. Every clearing agent must have an office. You go to the office, you see one chair there, one table there. You think that guy will give you 200,000 and give you No. Even your furniture didn't work for fifty thousand dollars. You said you are agent. My friend, let's look at ourselves. All these bad deals, all these bad deals playing around is we ourselves doing it. Nobody from the area is doing it. We do the declaration. Please, members, as we are all Gambians and we know that this is our honorable, our noble job and we want to continue with this job for the rest of our life, let's try to organize ourselves better so that we could live better. Thank you. Like the flows, most of them are saying that all their goods now they will send to Senegal instead of bringing it to Gambia. So that's a big loss of revenue. So if you have to kind of sell like sleeping, you pay 260. Now you bring your goods to Senegal, you pay maybe 225,000 up to your door, up to your warehouse and buy them. There's a money, there's a big difference. So I think Jerry needs to work with force. Uh, yes. This is a very important part of the, uh, the seminar. We call patience and answers. 
because if we had left early alone, some of your police questions may not be answered by us. And sometimes it's also good to hear from the, 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 the senior people. Um, maybe before I uh, say the final remarks, I want to uh, give uh, some response to the, 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 the last person who uh, made an issue about the ports, the delays and the ports, which are really people going to Senegal. Um, this morning, just this morning, I was listening to Kapitan with Peter Thomas. Um, the MD of GPA was on live trying to explain the same situation, post expansion, the possibilities of uh, the work going on. And he tried to explain, you know, to the general public uh, what is going on, what the intention of the post is, and what plans that are ahead. Uh, I'm sure most of you listening to it and some may miss it. But what I want to say is uh, we are all working as partners. You are a partner, a stakeholder. GPA is a partner. Civil agencies are partners. Maritime is a partner. GRA as well. But we all have our areas that we cover. And that is what I mean the issue of labor. GPA is responsible for the shift that comes to this country. Um, we don't want to go too much into what they do. But all I know is the management of GPA, they are trying their utmost and with the ministry's concern to make sure that the problem of the port is addressed. Because this is not a secret. It is an open secret that we all know that vessels will come and stay for a period of days, number of days, uh, before they are back. So this is an issue that's a concern for the MD of GPA, and it's a concern for us, it's a concern for you. And you know, uh, like he mentioned, uh, the importers, uh, most of the time they are impatient, they want to get their goods quickly. And this is why probably some of them want to go to Bayer Senegal and then get their goods here. But our players are that the ports will be expanded. You know, the ports will be, you know, the businesses are also coming up. It's just that the COVID has disturbed us. Otherwise, it would have gone to another level. But because this last one, two years, there was a big problem. Uh, most of the development projects, most of the issues that we need to do, we were having problems. But inshallah, just be patient. Just be patient with the EPA management. I am pretty sure. Uh, they are doing great. Uh, always this with the MD of uh, GPA, Mr. Osman Jobate, who happened to be my good brother. And he always tells me that they are working very hard for the expansion of the port because that also will help equip the clearance of the goods. And that will also encourage the importers to take the and then to clear them quickly. Um, uh, this is his aim, and this is our aim. I'm sure this is the your aim as well, and that is why these frustrations are coming. But let us be patient with them a little bit. I'm sure a lot of work is going on. Thank you. And uh, on a final note, I want to repeat to you that you call yourself partners with GRA, and we call you partners. We have principles, we have procedures, procedures and processes that are taking place. Some of your members who are found guilty of doing what they are not supposed to do, they are suspended in our system. It's an enforcement tool that we use. Like I said to you earlier on, we live in a computer world now, technology, world of technology, such that we don't have to run after people. If you are working with us as a partner, we know your team number, we know your declarant number, we have all your information. If you misbehave, all that we do, we have our system admin here and they see that. All that we do is we lock, we block you from our system. And that means you, anywhere you go, any office you go, you cannot work with GRA. We don't need to go after you. We sit in our office and block you. Do for the good sake, I want to appeal. For those who are, who are, who happen to be in that bracket, what we have realized, they go behind good ones, and they process that declaration for them. We've realized this, and we've written a letter to the, your executive, the 
President Escawaya, the Secretary General Escawaya. He said, this is a bad practice. Please avoid it. Anybody who come to you and said, please, um, I want you to help me to do my declaration. Tell them what happened. Why? You were having a declaration number, team number. Why can't you use the system? He or she, if he is honest to you, will tell you that. That is a problem I have with you. So you advise him to go and solve the problem so that he'll be able to use his own declaration number, his own team number, rather than you, are, you become an enabler to allow him to use your, your own number. We said that if we happen to know that, you, even if people have a problem with you, we will block you also. So it's a general warning to all of you that you just be careful, don't allow anybody to use your declaration number, your team number to punish your image. Because, like I said, this is, the, this is a career that you follow. And you are all professional in your own way. So this is a final advice to you, that please make sure that your team numbers, your declaration numbers are guided, secure. Don't allow any intruder, don't allow anybody to just use it. At the end of the day, if GRA comes to realize it, it can jeopardize your working process. Thank you very much. And you have a blessed delicious. Thank you. Thank you very much.